this earth learning idea looks at how fossils and how they're deformed can tell us about the stress that rocks have been subject to. If we think about the types of stress that can actually deform rocks, there are three different types. We have compression, which is where uh, opposing forces pushing in towards each other will squeeze the rock. We have tension, where opposing forces pulling away from each other will stretch the rock. And finally, shear stress, which is where we have forces uh, running past each other, which may deform the rock in a different way. Now we can look at the types of deformation by looking at uh, features within the rock that have a defined shape. For example, fossils. And this can be done in particular with trilobite fossils um, that we find in Ordovician rocks in North Wales, in the UK. These can show the effects of stress. And we can model how this works using Play-Doh. If we get a oblong piece of Play-Doh, and I'm using here a resin cast of a fossil. You though can use a shell or, or even perhaps a, a toy car. Something that has a regular shape. Make an imprint into the Play-Doh and we have a model of uh, the cast of a fossil. And we're ready to apply some stress. Let's look at some fossil material from uh, North Wales. This is the trilobite that's been deformed. It started out looking like the fossil we saw on the previous slide, and it's been changed into this. So how would you deform uh, the trilobite in your Play-Doh so it looked like fossil A? What type of stress would you apply? What effect does that actually have on the fossil? Now geologists call the direction that you've applied maximum stress sigma max. Which direction was this acting on this fossil? Have a go at deforming your Play-Doh to make this type of fossil. Okay, if we look at this, we can see that we're compressing the fossil. We've got uh, the forces shortening the fossil along its long axis, and it's getting wider on its short axis. So what direction do you think there was least stress on your deformed fossil? We call this sigma min. How do you know that that is the direction of least stress? And did was this done in the same way that you predicted? Okay. If we'll have a look at fossil B. This again is the same type of trilobite. This one you'll see though, looks different. So how would you deform this trilobite? What type of stress um, could be applied to this one, to deform it in this way? What effect does actually that have on the fossil? And which direction is this maximum stress, sigma max, actually working in? Okay, we might think 
that this fossil is deformed by tension, stretching it and pulling it apart. But as we can see from what's happening to my Play-Doh here, it's not really working. Something else, perhaps, must be going on. So if tension doesn't work, how could you apply a different stress to this fossil, to make it like fossil B? To remake your, your Play-Doh to have another go at this? What do you think the relationship between the maximum stress and the minimum stress for this fossil might actually be? How do you know that as well? Was the stress the same as you predicted? If we deform our Play-Doh using compression again, but this time in a different direction, you'll see that we end up with a fossil that looks like example B. The final example, fossil C, looks a bit different. What do you think is different about C compared to A and B. What type of stress could you apply uh, to a remade um, block of Play-Doh that would end up replicating what we see in Fossil C? If we look at the maximum stress here, we can see we're looking at shear stress, deforming uh, the fossil in this unusual way. Think about how we know that this is actually shear stress. What is it about the fossil that shows us that it must be a shear stress deforming? And a question to think about. Could we find examples of all of these three fossils, A, B and C, on the same bedding plane, within the same rock? What do you think? We can see that the direction of stress is really important. It determines how rocks get deformed. We can start to apply the idea then to other geological structures, like faults, for example. And thinking about how the direction of stress might actually create different types of faults, as well as the different types of stress.